words of power because we are kings and our words matter. There is a spiritual side to you and your spiritual side is this that the word of God can be in your heart, in your spirit, and in your mouth. And by the word in your mouth and in your heart, you can make a big difference in this world. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. In such a special way And yes, I praise you I lift you up And I magnify your name yeah. That is why my heart is filled with praise Say it out, I love you I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way, and yes, I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify Pastor Sam Chaladurai invites you to the special Christmas and New Year services of AFT Chennai. The service will be held at the Jesus Calls campus in Vanagaram, Chennai. Our Christmas service is on December 25th at 6 a.m. and our New Year service is on December 31st at 10 p.m. Messages will be in English with translation in Tamil. Everyone is welcome. We hope to see you there. We are spiritual beings, you and I, we are spirits. 
We are told to take the word and put it in our heart and in our mouth. The word must be in our mouth and in our heart. In other words, he's saying, you're a spirit being, you're a spiritual person, you live in a natural world, but don't worry about the problems of the natural world, the difficulties you're facing in the natural world. I made you as a spiritual being. You can operate on a different level. You can operate on the level that God operates. You're living here, but you're a spiritual being. So while you're living here, take the word of God and put it in your mouth and in your heart. Fill your heart with God's word because that is the source of the greatest power in the spiritual world. And that is the power which created this earth, earth and everything in it, the seen world. So that power, the power of the word is not only the greatest power in the spiritual world, it is a power that is bigger than any power in the natural world because it is the power that created everything in the natural world. So God says, even though you live here in the natural world, you can operate spiritually by speaking the word of God over your problems. Speaking the word of God over your difficulties. There is a spiritual world and the natural world. Now just to show that to you and, and, and show it very powerfully, maybe we need to turn to Daniel chapter 10. Let me read to you from verse 10. This chapter is where Daniel has been fasting for 21 days, not eating all the good food and stuff, you know. He's been keeping away from some of the good stuff and uh, kind of going through a, some kind of a fast because in the Old Testament, the fasting were often, was often done because people wanted to repent and turn and change and all that because they backslid and went away from God. They wanted to repent and come back to God. So fasting was some kind of a, uh, observing a sorrow, you know, for their sins and all that. That's how they fasted. So Daniel rightfully was doing so because they, people have backslidden, people have forgotten God. That's why they ended up as slaves in Babylon. And now the Persian ruler is ruling. And uh, they're in that kingdom for years together. They've been there. Now, Daniel is sorrowing about his people, about his nation, about what has happened to them, their plight, that God's people, that God brought out of Egypt, out of the slavery, has now again become slaves. God hates slavery. He brought them out, delivered them from the bondage, broke the chains, drowned Pharaoh's army in, Egypt, in the Red Sea, and brought them out, but they landed up in Babylon as slaves, and now the Persian ruler is ruling. Daniel is sorrowful, fasting, praying about the situation. And here he has a vision now. He describes it like this. Suddenly a hand touched me, verse 10, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, someone speaking to him in the dream said to him, Oh, in that vision said to him, Oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was yet, while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. So here in a vision, somebody's coming and speaking to him, and he stood there trembling. Verse 12, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. From the first day, Daniel has been fasting 21 days. Now the angel of God that has come to him in this vision and talking to him is coming to him on the 21st day. And the angel is bringing a news to him and he says, from the first day you prayed, from the first day you started humbling yourself. See, fasting was not only to observe a kind of a sorrow for their sins and repentance, but it was also a thing that showed that they're humbling themselves before God. We've been wrong. Forgive us. This is what their fasting meant. So from the day you began to fast, literally he's saying, from the day you began to humble yourself, from the day you began to fast, your words were heard. The angel is saying, your prayer has been heard from the first day. I want to emphasize something here. A lot of people these days fast because they think God is not hearing them if they just pray ordinarily. 
So fasting is an attempt to get God's attention. Fasting, screaming, crying, doing something, you know, they, they think that God who is not listening and who is indifferent to their problems will somehow now pay attention because they're going through all this rigmarole, you know, putting on all these gymnastics, you know, that God will listen. They think God needs to be shouted at. Maybe he's sleeping, you know. Maybe he's tired. Maybe he considers us a nuisance. So let's fast and make more nuisance. Then finally, he'll decide this is too much nuisance and he'll answer, you know. That's the attitude sometimes I think, you know, of some people who fast. But here is some good news. The angel says, from the first day you started praying and fasting, God heard your prayers. When you began your fast, God heard it. Not because you fasted. When you began to fast itself, God heard it. When you humbled yourself, when you came to God, God heard your words. See, our God is a good God. Let's not present him in a bad light in the, before the world. He doesn't hear you because you fasted. He hears you because he says, come unto me, call unto me, and I will answer you. In another place, he actually says, before you call, I will answer. Hello? <laughs> before your, his phone rings, he picks it up. What a nice God. Before you even dial, he's already on the line. He said, what do you want, you know? And before you tell him what you need, he knows what you need because he's God. Don't treat him like a man. So God says, from the first day you began to humble yourself and began your fasting, when you began your fasting itself, God heard you. Now listen to this. And I've come because of your words. But he has come 21 days later. So verse 13 he explains why he is late. Why the delay? Why 21 days it took him to come from there? Is it the distance? That he had to travel so many miles and come over here? <laughs> to spirits, distance don't matter, you see. They travel faster than light. Distance, distance does not matter. So what is the delay? Why delay? Verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, now listen to this, if you have never read this portion, this will be very startling. But the prince of the per kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. That means he blocked his coming. This angel says, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. He tried to stop me from coming here. 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, is referring to Michael, the archangel of God. One of the chief princes came to help me. He got reinforcement from heaven. He called for help, and God sent Michael the archangel, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now, which king is he talking about? He's an angel. You can be sure he's not talking about the king who was ruling in Persia at that time, or the kings that belonged to the kingdom of Persia at that time. Because they were all earthly kings. They were all in their palaces. How could they go and stop this angel from coming down? For 21 days, how could they stop an angel of God from coming down? He says, he tried to stop me. I got called for help. Michael, the archangel, came to help me. That's why the delay of 21 days. This verse is a very remarkable verse, very revealing verse about what's happening in the world today. And what, is, what was happening in the world at that time? You see, the kingdom of Persia was a leading kingdom of that time. It was a mega kingdom having all kinds of small kings under, under them, nations under them, annexed under them, came to power and uh, ruling the world at that time, basically. The kingdom of Persia. But behind that seen kingdom of Persia and the king and the kings of the kingdom of Persia, it seems like there is a parallel spiritual kingdom out there in the unseen realm that is also called the kingdom of Persia. Very startling. Many Bible scholars totally agree with this, and that's what they're saying. You read commentaries, they will tell you that in so many words. They say, there is a parallel kingdom to the kingdom of Persia spiritually. That means... The devil has nationwide, uh, nationwide uh, um, authorities appointed 
to rule over nations and kingdoms from behind. What you see is a seen kingdom, but there is an unseen kingdom behind. There are devils, the evil powers that are put in place by this demonic kingdom to take control of the nations, to influence its leaders and men and women there and the society itself uh, to be influenced. So that everything can be destroyed there so that wars can come, hatred can breed and, and fightings can come and, and misunderstandings can come, all kinds of evil can happen, economic downfall can happen, all kinds of unhappiness can come, the people may be destroyed. The, the devil is a destroyer. He came to steal, kill and destroy. So the devil, it seems like, has parallel powers and the demon powers or demonic powers in the unseen realm in charge of the kingdom of Persia are also called by the name king of Persia and kings of Persia, the rulers of darkness that were ruling over that kingdom. Hello. See, some of you are sitting there stunned, you know, say, my God, you know. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is right. That's exactly what's happening. He says, those kings, the king of Persia, he's referring not to the earthly king, he's referring to the demonic force, power, that is behind that earthly king, influence that, influencing that earthly king, that stopped him on his way to Daniel. Why stop him? Because... Daniel is getting some important information from God. And uh, that information should not go to Daniel. That is why the, the demonic powers try to stop him. They like to keep, in, keep you in slavery, continue to wreak havoc, and continue to cause the people to live in failure. They don't want the people to be delivered, go back to their country and all of that. No. Slavery, you continue. This is the purpose for which there was a blockade, really, in the heavenly places. And Michael, the archangel, comes and helps. And as a result, he makes it on the 21st day. All right? Now, the angel comes on the 21st day and talks to Daniel and gives him a lot of revelation concerning things. But the thing that you see here is this. There is a parallel spiritual kingdom behind the kingdoms of this world, behind, behind the nations of this world so many times. That explains why sometimes thing, things go terribly wrong. Why sometimes there is such hatred, such evil, such, uh, uh, such terrible things that happen in nations of the world, all over the world, why things happen. This explains why. Because there is a power that is operating from behind that is working up all these things. You know, there is a spiritual power that works up all these things among people in that society, and dividing them and, and destroying them, tearing them up, somehow causing them to fight and tear one another up and be destroyed. That's what the devil is doing. That was, that's what the devil has been doing ever since the beginning. That's the way it's, hap it's been happening. So that explains why things happen. Let me give you another example. You know, Jesus, when he was, um, when he was being inquired by Pilate, the mob gathered outside of Pilate's residence and they started screaming. There was a mob mentality, you know. Thousands of people just started screaming, saying, crucify Jesus and release Barabbas for us. Who is Barabbas? Barabbas is the best known criminal of the day. Hello. <laughs> He's the most famous criminal of the day. He's a thief and a destroyer, a murderer and whatnot, you know. That guy is terrible. He's been in jail for a long time. They're saying, release him, crucify Jesus. Now, how can you compare Jesus? Is Jesus worse than Barabbas? What's wrong with these people? What went wrong in their mind? How will people ever say, release Barabbas and crucify Jesus? Anybody in the right mind, I don't think will say, say something like that. If you're in the right mind, you will never say something like that. 
Would you want to crucify Jesus? What, what wrong did Jesus do? Did he kill anybody? Did he steal from anybody? Did he take people's stuff? You know, he healed the blind, the lame, the lepers, he even touched them and healed them. He was so kind and good and such a nice person. He even raised the dead. He preached a message, you know, that is, that nobody ever preached. There was such power in it. There was such life transforming power, you know. Some prostitutes came and their lives were changed. People that were living a very bad life like Zacchaeus, their life was changed. Look, the, look at the kind of impact this Zacchaeus was taking bribe left and right, you know. Living like that. When Jesus came into his house and visited him, just one visit, that's all. That man was changed. He says, whatever I took, I'll give it four times back. <laughs> now you, that's real change, brother. If anybody says, I'll give it four times back, that means he's gone through repentance in a true way. <laughs> Four times I'll give it back, whatever I took unjustly from anybody. Now that's the kind of transformation, life transformation that Jesus brought. Amazing transformation in society. People healed, sinners saved, prostitutes' lives turned around. Hello. And now they're saying, crucify him. We want Barabbas. He's good for our society. Release him. Let him come and live among us. We want to crucify this good man. Pilate was stunned. You know, how can you say something like that? He said, I'm going to wash my hands off of this because I don't want this, this thing to come over me. I don't want to be punished by God because of this. You know, I see no sin in this man. And he didn't belong to Jesus' church, you know. He examined the whole case and washed his hands and said, I see nothing wrong with this man. You're making all kinds of accusations, but this man never did anything wrong. I'm washing my hands. You want him to crucify it? Because you are demanding it, I got to do it. But I see no reason why I should crucify him and release Barabbas for us. Out of their mind, I would say. Totally out of their mind. Why? How did they go out of their mind? What happened to their mind? Have people lost their ability to think? I would say to you, yes, there was a spiritual power in operation. There was a demonic power that was in operation, ruining people's mind, bringing that hatred against Jesus, turning against Jesus completely, so that they cried as a mob saying, crucify him. So unjust, not right. Anybody in the right mind would never do it to Jesus and a, or any person like Jesus, but they said crucify him because their minds at that point were influenced by the powers of the devil. And the devil thought he won a big victory. He conspired everything and got the people going and made the demand, and he thought he, got, he had his prey. But God is a redeemer. He turns even the bad into good. When they crucified him, the devil didn't realize it's going to come back to him. God raised him back from the dead. By crucifixion and the blood that was shed, the sins of humanity were wiped out. Salvation has been provided. He has become the savior. And God raised him back from the dead because God is greater than the devil. <laughs> devil can put him on the cross. Devil can cause some people to kill him and all that. But God raised him back from the dead. But the point is this, even on that day, there was an evil power that was at work behind those people. Otherwise, people would have never done it. Just imagine, normal people in their right mind would have never demanded Jesus to be crucified. Abnormal, abnormality due to demonic influence. <laughs> Anytime you see hatred that you cannot explain why, you can bet on it. It is a demonic power that is working behind, causing that kind of hatred. So that is a clue for all of you to know what, is, what happens in this world and why it happens, why it happens, and how you should pray for the world, and what kind of perspective you should have. You should not have just a natural perspective. You should not just, you should not just think that what you see is what is there. There are things that you do not see.
But at the same time, you need to realize that you are a spiritual being, that to you there is a spiritual side, not just this natural side of what you see. There is a spiritual side to you, and your spiritual side is this, that the word of God can be in your heart, in your spirit, and in your mouth. And by the word in your mouth and in your heart, you can make a big difference in this world. Amen? Voices, all right, you ready? Come to Bethlehem and see. Newborn King. Glory to God in the highest. 